Italian mafia demanded a piece of the Pagan's drug trade. Nicky Scarfo was the boss of the Philadelphia mob. At some point, he decided that we were going to pay a street tax to the mob to be allowed to deal drugs in Philadelphia. He lost his mind when he thought that he could shake down the Pagan Motorcycle Club for street tax. The mob was tired of the Pagan's refusals and tried to pressure the gang by kidnapping a drug supplier. Jimmy D responded swiftly. I then got my crew together from my chapter, went down, and started kidnapping their people. On February 26, 1981, Jimmy D kidnapped two made men. In a show of power, he forced them to drive through downtown Philly. We get to Broad and Walnut. The driver, I got a 45 to the back of his head, looks across the street, and there's four or five cops having coffee. He says to me, if you're going to shoot me, you're going to shoot me now. He pulls up, up on the sidewalk with the cops, thinking they were going to protect them. Got out of the car and start running. Jimmy D was not impressed and showed no mercy. I got out of the car and shot him in front of the cops. The mobster lived to tell the tale, and Jimmy D was arrested. But his stint in jail would be short-lived. Philadelphia was very corrupt. We had a lot of people on the payroll. I wind up getting out of jail on $750 bail for a shooting in Center City downtown. His payoffs of the Philly PD meant it would be a year and a half before the case ever went to trial. The club's war with the mob would continue. But according to Jimmy D, the Pagans never paid tax while he ran the gang. We're the toughest giant in the valley, and you gotta back that up. The Pagans Motorcycle Gang has built a criminal brotherhood based on violence and drug dealing. They've stayed secretive and exclusive, maintaining their hold over their territory with their own set of laws. Pagans live by pagan rules. Don't want to be judged by law enforcement. Don't want to answer to society's laws. Pagans answer to their own code. This code is included in the Pagan Constitution, which governs membership requirements, the roles of women, and even the type of bike members can own. It's got to be a Harley Davidson, and it's got to be 900 cc's or more. That's in the rule book. That's what it's got to be. This is an outlaw motorcycle club with more rules than the Constitution. In order to wear the Pagan's name, members are expected to follow these rules. But Jimmy D says there's only one that really matters. The first rule is Mother Club is, is God. The Mother Club is what the gang calls its board of directors. The Mother Club sets national policy and club conduct. The chapters fall underneath its rule. The structure of the chapters is much like the military, with a sergeant at arms, an enforcer and soldiers that come under the command of a chapter president, or what the pagans call a diamondback. These leaders wear a 1% diamond patch on the back of their jacket. Their word is law. You gotta listen to your diamond. You gotta do whatever your diamond tells you what to do. The Pagan's ultra-secret nature is forged by this unquestioning attitude. I could, at 2 o'clock in the morning, be in a bar and say to myself, let's go visit the guys in New York. Let's go visit the guys in Pittsburgh. The fact that we could float around and find a home within riding distance on a motorcycle was one of the best parts of being a Pagan. Though many want to become Pagans, the road to membership is not easy. Denny's journey started in an unlikely way. I met some at a party and wound up meeting a bunch of Hell's Angels, and I thought they were pretty cool cats. The Hell's Angels asked Denny to join. His membership in the gang didn't go as planned. And I was at a party a couple years later, and uh, this angel tried to 
the chick I was with, and I wound up getting into a fight with him. I actually beat his ass, but then I got my ass beat by the rest of them. So I said, F the hell's angels. And uh, I started hanging out with the pagans. Denny liked the pagans' rebellious and extremely secretive ways. He decided to become a prospect. It's a role that gave him many responsibilities with few rights. Any pagan can tell you what to do, but you got boundaries, you won't take the bike, you won't f with your old lady, you won't f with your house. Denny quickly moved from prospect to full member, eventually becoming a gang enforcer. Some guy messed with somebody's old lady or whatever, and they called me and said, listen, can you handle this for me? And I like, yeah, I got no problem with that. He often didn't know the details. All he needed was a name. I walked into this bar, I saw the guy, walked over, picked up a pool ball, and I bashed his f***ing skull in. And threw him out the back door, got on my bike, and I left. When recruiting, the Pagans look hard for toughness, loyalty, and a do-or-die attitude that means everything to them. Back then, I could handle my look. I take care of business, I don't f around, I won't take f from anybody. Uh, I'm not an f all, you know? The Pagans' code means they also prize men who can keep their mouths shut. The gang has developed its own language to help members avoid the law. Argo means Argo yourself, and none you means none of your business. What those words are used for is, for an example, we get grabbed by the cops. They bring us in. The cops start questioning guys. We just yell Argo none you to each other, which means we don't talk. The answer to every question is Argo none you. Argo yourself, none of your business. It's a code between each other. The pagans react when a brother is facing the system, often using their numbers to protect their own. What you'll see inside the courtroom is 10 or 15 guys from the organization staring down the jury, staring down the witnesses, trying to intimidate the judge, trying to intimidate the prosecutor to make this case disappear. The pagan way also extends to the women who hang out with the gang. They aren't allowed to be members and are considered property of their men. Women have a property patch, if they're lucky enough to have a property patch. The property patch says property of Jimmy Day. I mean, that's my property. It's like my motorcycle or my car. It's my property. I own that. I do with it what I want. You buy a car and want to paint it, you paint it. I got a property and I want to turn her out to the bros to the club or its members come first. Business usually comes uh, second. The bike usually comes third. The dog comes fourth. And the woman comes last. In spite of how they're treated, there is no shortage of women who are willing to be pagan property. They like that bad guy. They want to piss off their dad or something like that, you know? Who knows what makes chicks do things, period. And we some more of Banging dirty bikers beyond me. It's unbelievable. It's like a magnet. The club, the lifestyle, the spotlight, the power tracks them like a magnet. There's more women dying to get, become a part of it than there are men. The women often become part of the pagan's drug trade. The gang will sometimes use them to carry drugs or weapons. Some clubs use women for surveillance. They'll use it for, uh, they use the women for intel. They'll use the women, uh, put them in specific places for jobs. The pagans take extreme pride in their club colors. That jacket means more to them than their family does. You get on your bike when you got your colors on, you're with 30 or 40 guys. Everybody's riding two abreast, and cars are getting out of your way, and there's nothing stopping you. It's like having an extension of your, you know. <laughs>